Hello and welcome to my channel. Probably the most important component of any robot is actuator. And the most important component of any actuator is the gearbox. The precise gearboxes are very expensive. And this is the main reason why the robots and robotic arms are very expensive. Many people trying to make a good gearboxes out of plastic in order to make them 3D printable and to make them accessible and affordable. But this is a change because the plastic is uh, not the best material for the strands, but it's doable. And the proof of this is IGUS. This company, they managed to make several different actuators out of plastic, but they are not making these actuators 3D printable actuators. So it's still not super accessible for general public. And the idea for today's video is to see if we would be able to make a completely 3D printed gearbox even without bearings. So it's 3D printed parts and the only metal parts is the screws and nuts. On the internet you can find many designs of the 3D printable gearboxes. Usually this is either harmonic drive gearbox, planetary gearbox or cycloidal gearbox. All 3D printable harmonic drive gearboxes which I saw are not really powerful and they cannot handle a high torque. Just to be clear, for me the high torque is 3 kg meter or 30 newton meter torque. But maybe the most popular gearbox is cycloidal gearbox and there are a lot of designs on the internet and this includes the recent video from the James Bruton. And quite often these gearboxes they can handle a high payload, they can be reliable but usually they require a lot of metal bearings inside and because of these bearings they become quite heavy and less affordable because you need to pay for these bearings. But today we're going to look at the planetary gearboxes because we can make them without any metal bearing and this makes this gearbox very affordable and these gearboxes they can be really solid and the proof of this you can find on the YouTube channel of the Gear Down For What where they made extremely solid compound planetary gearboxes. And this is what I have designed. So this is my version of the compound planetary 3D printed gearbox. And as you can see, there is no any bearing here. And from the metal hardware, there is only screws and nuts. Each gear is a double helix gear, as you can see here. And that's why all this construction is held together without any need for bearing. Basically, the compound planetary gearbox consists of two planetary gearboxes. And here, one is over here and the second one is here. And as you can see, they're a little bit different. So the, the ring gear of this one is smaller than the ring gear of this one. And the sun gear of this one is bigger than the sun gear of this one. And this is specially made in order to have all the planets on the same axis. And thanks to this, it can work. The blue ring gear should be stationary gear, should be fixed. This is the input, so the motor should rotate this sun gear. And the output is the yellow ring gear. And so, as you can see, when I rotate the sun gear, the output gear rotates. The reduction ratio here is around 30. And unfortunately, it's not back drivable. Even with all my force, I cannot back drive it. The basic idea for this gearbox is to make it kind of flat, kind of pancake sized. And also I wanted to put a lot of planetary gears here like this. Uh, I hope it's going to be a little bit more reliable and a little bit more durable. And now, in order to make everything a little bit more fun, I will add brushless motor to this gearbox and see how it works with the motor. This is a motor from the T-Motor company and it's MN5008KV340. And this is all the parts which we would need in order to install the motor. I also reprinted the ring gear because I added these mounting points. And for the brushless motor controller, I'm going to use the Motius controller from the MJ Bots company because I have several of them and it's quite easy to use them. They have an encoder at the back. So this should be mounted at the back of the motor. Let's start with the motor. This is not the cheapest motor, but I hope it's going to work really well. Sticker and this is our motor. 
And the reason why I choose this specific motor is because it has the screw at the back of the shaft. This one. And I hope this will help to fix the magnet at the back of the shaft for our encoder. And so instead of this piece, I'm going to mount this 3D printed piece, which will hold our magnet. This screw itself is magnetic, so I'm going to replace it with a non-magnetic stainless steel screw. And so this is non-magnetic screw. Cool. I also made a hole in this piece over here. This will help to take off the magnet if I will need. The magnet goes inside. It's better to put the glue inside. But I think I will just use it like this. Perfect. Next we will mount it on this piece. And on this piece I even made this kind of groove which goes perfectly with the motor. Like this. And now we can fix the motor. The soldering is done. Now we can install this controller. And between this piece and controller there is this spacer. And it's going like this. And so the controller is fixed. There is this wire sticking out over here. It's not very beautiful, but it should work. Another thing which I would like to do is to test this controller with this motor. So for this I need to connect it and calibrate it. I have added here the standoffs like this it can stand. And I have connected the power supply and the CAN bus. The CAN bus goes through the USB adapter to the Raspberry Pi. And so let's switch on the power and do the calibration. How to do this exactly, I already explained in one of my previous video where I tested the Motius controller. Calibration, go! Cool, calibration is done. And now when the calibration is done, we can run the TV and see if this motor works. And also we need to limit the current in the TV in order not to fry this motor. The peak current for this motor is 35 Amp, but I'm going to put the maximum current 20 Amp just to be on the safe side. The configuration is saved and we can try to run our motor. Let's move it one turn. Let's move it back to zero. And this is how it works. And now we can continue with the assembly. On each of these ring gear I have installed the nuts over here. Because when everything is going to be assembled, I would not be able to put the nuts inside. Each of this planet consists of the three parts. So it's basically this piece, central piece and this piece and all of them, they are clamped together with the two screws like this. Also, I should say that all these screws, they are oriented in the special order. Meaning that here it's like this. Afterwards, this one, it rotates a little bit. One more. Here one more and here it's perpendicular to the original one and it's always like this. So if for example I take this planet gear, I put it like this, this one is perpendicular. If I put this one here radially, this one is perpendicular. So it's actually was tricky to put all these planets like this. Okay, so we need to unmount these planet gears and replace these ring gears with these ring gears and this sun gear with this sun gear. So let's do this. I'm going to do this carefully without removing the planets. Like this is going to be easier for me. Now I can push these screws a little bit out and like this I can take off this gear. Now when I removed this external part of the planet gears, I can take out the sun gear and the ring gear. The sun gear. We're going to replace it with this one. And the ring gear. And we're going to replace it with this one. This was easy. Now we can rotate this and do the same for this ring gear. Now I can take off this ring gear and replace it with a new one. Everything still works, so we can continue assembly. Now we just need to put back these gears over here. Now we need to do this side. And the most painful part is finished. Everything still works. And now we can install our motor.
The installation of the motor should be quite simple. I just need to push it inside this sun gear. And afterwards, these grooves should fit these parts. And as you can see, now it's installed. And so if I rotate the motor, it also rotates the sun gear. Now we just need to fix this holder. Looks cool. Now I will install these small fits. Like this it can stand, but this is kind of optional. And here comes another cosmetic piece. Not really important, but just for fun. I have connected the power and the CAN bus. And we can try to run it. So the motor is enabled. And now we can turn it one turn of the motor. Haha, -ha, cool, it works. Go back. Nice. And now five turn of the motor. And go back. And now let's try to turn it 28 turn of the motor. Oh, exactly one turn of the output shaft. Perfect. And go back. Nice. Really cool. Let me put some grease on these gears. As you can probably see, I have put some grease inside. Not much, but some. Maybe I should put even more. But I think it already works a little bit better. And go back. Let me just check by hand if it's strong enough. I suppose it should be, but let's check. I cannot really stop it like this. And another thing which I would like to see if it can handle the radial forces. So the forces in this dimension. So for this I'm going to run it and I'm going to push in the different parts and see if it's going to slow down or not. Not very scientific, but just an indication. Yeah, works nice. This is quite cool. Great! I really love how it works. The only problem is that it's not back drivable, but the rest is uh, quite impressive for me. At least when you take into account that it's all 3D printed and there is no any bearing inside. Just a little bit of theory. This particular gearbox, it has this number of T's. So on the motor side, the sun gear has 40 T's, the planet 16, and the ring gear has 72 T's. On the output side, it's 48, 16 and 80. And using these values, we can calculate the reduction ratio with this formula. And this gives us the reduction ratio 1 to 28. And that's why with 28 turns of the motor, the output shaft made exactly one turn. So this formula works. We have tested this gearbox. Surprisingly, it works quite well. The thing which I don't like about this gearbox is that it's not back drivable. But what I really like is that there is no any bearing inside and this is really cheap gearbox, completely 3D printed. Another very useful feature is that this gearbox can take both 
the radial and also the axial load and this is perfect for the robot arm. So like this we can put this gearbox in any joint and it should work. It could be at the joint like this with the axial force, at the joint like this with the radial force or at the some random position where there is both the radial and the axial component of the force. The two important things which we did not test it is efficiency and durability. I suppose that efficiency would not be perfect because this is a plastic gear so there is a little bit of flex in these gears and probably that's why this gearbox is not back drivable because we lose some of the efficiency in the plastic gears and also it would be nice to test the durability as these plastic gears who knows how long they're going to last. But in order to increase this durability I already made quite big gears with a lot of planets. So I hope it's going to be the decent durability. And probably we're going to test this in the future videos. And in order not to miss these videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, please don't forget to put the like to this video. This will help me to promote this video and also my channel. And this will help me to survive and continue the projects like this one. Another thing which helped me to continue with the project like this is the support from my patrons and from the people who support me via YouTube channel membership. Here are the names of all these brave people. Thank you a lot, your help is really appreciated. As usual, stay safe, good luck with the projects and see you next time.